Comptroller Leslie Munger. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. It's really great to be here in Peoria with all of you. Thank you, Tim, for your very kind introduction and your, for your strong leadership of our state party. Thank you, Governor Rauner, for your strong leadership of our state. And thank you to the Peoria County Republicans for hosting us in this great convention. Thank you so much. It is so appropriate that we take a moment to remember our late friend, Judy Barr Topinka. I'll tell you, as your comptroller, I feel the big shoes she left every single day. And I often wonder what she might be saying if she were here right now when looking at the condition that our state is in today. I really hate to speculate what she really would say, but I can be pretty sure she'd be giving someone an earful. So. <laughs> Before I go any further, I want to thank each and every one of you for all the work you do for the Republican Party and for taking your time to be here today. My husband John and I are Republican committeemen in Lake County where we live. In fact, have been doing that long before I was ever in this role in, in the state. And John's now our township chairman. So we know firsthand how much work you do as volunteers for our party. We are so grateful for all you do. You are the backbone of the party, of our party in Illinois. And I have to tell you that your efforts are needed even, are now even more than ever. Because our state is at a crossroads. We are locked in an unprecedented struggle over whether to continue the reckless tax and spend policies that have driven jobs from Illinois and led to the fiscal crisis that we are in today, or to do a, take a different approach, encouraging businesses in Illinois to grow and put people back to work, expanding our economy, living within our means, and balancing our budgets. This way, we can really begin to keep the promises that we have made to the people of Illinois. Now, as you heard in my um, bio that Tim just mentioned, I come from the private sector. And I will tell you, uh, seeing firsthand what goes on in Springfield has truly been an eye-opener. Decades of fiscal mismanagement, 15 years of unbalanced budgets, promises of spending with no idea as to how we were going to pay the bill when it came due, all passed by the Democrat majority, have brought us to the point that today in our state, we have $7 billion of unpaid bills in the state. $7 billion. We have another $2 billion in services that have been provided but cannot yet be billed because we don't have a budget in place. We have more than $110 billion in unfunded pension liabilities in our state. And on, on, and on any given day, we have about $100 million in cash available to pay all those bills. Now, I think that sometimes these numbers are so big, it gets really hard for us to wrap our minds around the magnitude of the problem that we face in our state every day. So I found it helpful by getting these numbers down to something that we can understand in our own homes by taking six zeros off of all the numbers I just shared with you. So I'd like you to imagine that you're sitting down at your own kitchen table to pay your bills and you look in your checkbook and you see that you have $100 because as I mentioned, we have 100 million in any given day in the state. You would be looking at a pile of bills sitting on your kitchen table waiting for payment that totaled over $7,000. Now, you knew you'd spent more money. You just didn't have those bills in your hand yet. They hadn't shown up in your mailbox. But when they did, you'd have another $2,000 worth of bills that you would have to pay. This is our unfunded part of the government. And if we think about our unfunded pension liabilities, like a credit card bill, you would open up a credit card statement to see uh, $110,000 on that statement that you have to make a monthly payment on. And you have $100. Now, would any of us look at that $100 and think we still had money to spend? Maybe it was time for a trip to the mall? Of course we wouldn't. No one would, except that's what our Democrat majority does every day in Springfield when they continue to pass bills and spend money without any idea as to how we are going to pay for it. <laughs> And 
And this is one of the reasons that I announced last month that I was going to stop prioritizing pay for the legislators and the elected officers of the state. and put our paychecks in line with every other bill waiting for payment in the state. Those of us who are sent to serve the people of Illinois should not be prioritized over those we are serving, those whose tax dollars pay our salaries. It's wrong. And so I'm really proud to have been able to do that. We're at a fiscal cliff in our state. We must stop spending money we do not have. And we must get Illinois back on a strong fiscal track. And our, the election this November is critical to our ability to do that. Now, as many of you know, the Democrats passed a law just after I was appointed that turned my four-year appointment into a two-year appointment. So I am on the ballot this November. They did that because they thought it would be easier for them to take back this seat. Uh, in a year where their presidential election typically turns out more Democrats. Well, I will tell you this. They have a surprise coming because Illinois Republicans know what is at stake in this election. And we are going to turn out in November. And I can promise you this. No one will work harder than I will to try and get this elect to, to work hard to win this election this fall. I am only here, just like all of you in this room, because I love my state. And I want to work hard to get Illinois back on a strong track for our families, for our businesses, and make it a better place to live. And we are all going to work together. With your help, with friends like you out knocking on doors, making phone calls, rallying your friends, getting out the vote, we will win in November, and we will take back our state. So, Thank you all for all your work, for being here. Thank you for what you do for our party and for our state, for all of us, us who have to run as candidates on the, this November. Thank you, thank you. God bless you all.